Now, this is a tragic story and it's not funny in any way whatsoever. But there's nothing funnier than when someone comes up with some harebrained scheme to make, like, the perfect crime. And it ends up just gloriously backfiring because it was actually extremely stupid. YouTuber broadcast a fake video game live stream to give himself an alibi while he murdered 32-year-old mother-to-be Natalie McNally. The 32-year-old was re-arrested on January the 31st after being detained in, de in December. Natalie McNally was 15 weeks pregnant at the time of her death in County Armagh. Uh, Stephen McCullough was remanded in custody until February the 24th by a judge. <coughs> so this guy's a YouTuber, he's got about 40,000 subscribers now. I don't think he's, I'm pretty sure his channel will be gone by now, because this is everywhere now. But essentially, he wanted to murder a girl. Now, as far as I can see and the stuff I've checked online, there's not been a motive for it yet. I thought, oh dear, pregnant girl, was she, is it like an ex-girlfriend or something like that, and she's got pregnant with another guy or something, who knows, and everything, but none of it's came out, so we've not... I mean, we pretty much know that the guy bloody done it, but we don't know why, as of yet, why he did it. And see, when you look at his videos, the guy's a dweeb. He's just a complete dweeb. And he, I mean, you didn't think he had a killer, but he was a killer, but, you know, just goes to show you. A YouTuber staged a video game live, a video gaming live stream to provide an alibi on the night that he allegedly killed an expectant mother, a court has held. Stephen McCullough, 32, was remanded in custody after appearing before a district judge on Thursday, charged with the murder of Natalie McNally in Lurgan, County Armagh, in December. Uh, Miss McNally, 32, who was 15 weeks pregnant at the time of her death, was stabbed in her home in Silverwood Green in Lurgan on the night of December 18th. McCullough from Woodland Gardens, Lisburn, was previously a arrested on December the 19th, but he was released and ruled out as a suspect, reportedly due to his live stream alibi, and then he was re-arrested on January the 31st, because basically what he done was he went, oh, I'll just do like, I'll pre-record a live stream and then upload it and then go out, make it look like it's an actual live stream, and then I'll go out and kill the girl, and then I'll come back and be like, I couldn't have done it. I was live streaming, but see when you see some of the stuff he was doing in the live stream, it's, uh, it's so bad. It's terrible. Uh, he, he was basically, he was trying to sell things a bit too hard, but we'll get into it. Uh, at a remand hearing at Lisbon Magistrates Court on Thursday, the judge heard that McCullough, who has a YouTube channel under the username Vote Saxon 7 so I guess we know what type of Irishman he is, uh, staged a live broadcast on the night of the murder with footage appearing to show him playing the video game Grand Theft Auto for six hours. Oh, God, that's... That's going to get mentioned, isn't it? We're going to go back to the 90s with that stuff. Uh, da, da, da. And there he is, and this is like the infamous live stream that he was playing. And it, what he'd done was he's like, oh, guys, there's a bug. I can't read the chat. Whenever I do it, my PC tries to fuck me in the bum bum and all this stuff. And that's what he was doing. But And he should have like stopped maybe after saying that once or twice. But he made this whole big thing about how I'm not going to be interacting with the chat at all, and he was basically selling it a hell of a lot. He was, yeah, not interacting at all. But another thing as well that was there uh, to be pointed out is he made a comment about someone called Natalie, which was the name of the murder victim. He said something like, absolutely, and then he went, absolutely, but, like, done this little sinister thing. Ah, he fucked himself. The guy's stupid. He's dumb. Just dumb criminal. Bet he thought he was so smart as well. But let's get into the rest of the article. Yeah. Uh, nah, I can tell that that guy's weird. That's why I slap him. <laughs> I am the knight. Ah, oh, you're an idiot. Uh, a senior detective told the court that extensive technical examination of his devices by cyber experts has indicated that the footage was pre-recorded and played out as if it was live, which is a very common thing you can do. I mean, YouTube had the exact same system for uh, premieres and stuff like that. And yeah, you can like live stream and just stream a video instead, but it looks like it's live because you're using like OBS or something like that. Uh, the Police Service of Northern Ireland Detective Chief Inspector Neil McGuinness uh, noted that on the footage that McCullough tells his 37,000 subscribers that he is unable to interact with them live due to technical issues and that's where he was he was really pushing the point home, he did it a little bit too much. Uh, the video, which is still available online, it might not be now, I'm 
pretty sure YouTube got on top of that. It shows McCullough playing Grand Theft Auto Vice City on an Xbox console. He described the live stream as a little bit out of the blue since he doesn't usually stream. Hmm. Uh, McCullough was uh, dressed in a black t-shirt with a Santa-style Christmas hat at the time of the stream and at points was seen vaping and pouring himself a beer. He told his followers he had no idea how long the live stream would last, adding that he had not done a stream previously due to work commitments and stuff in my private life. It's all been a bit of a nightmare. And there he is there. And one thing that I do, right, is I know this sounds like a little bit selfish or something like that because it's obviously a horrible tragedy. You know, a poor woman, a poor pregnant woman has died. But see, whenever I hear that someone has done some horrendous stuff and they show a Twitter account, I'll look at the Twitter account and see if they're not following me. I'm always like, oh, thank God. <laughs> I'm like, oh, good. That means that this person either didn't know me or didn't like me, and I'm like, and that makes me happy. That makes me happy. Still not great. The guy's a massive piece of shit. Uh, McCullough says, uh, this stream I am very worried about. It could end at any moment because I've been trying to set this up. The computer was having none of it. He claimed he would be unable to see his followers' comments in the stream due to technical issues, adding the quality of this whole stream is a little bit crap. He then said he had put his phone away. The stream goes on for more than six hours and sees him talking to his followers as if he is playing the game live. The court heard that McCullough and Miss McNally had been exchanging messages on the afternoon before she was killed in which he told her he was going to be live streaming later that evening. Uh, Mr McGuinness uh, told District Judge Rosie Waters that while Mc McCullough denies involvement in McNally's murder, he has conceded in a statement to police that he purported that the purported live stream was pre-recorded by him days earlier. At the conclusion of the interview process last night or early this morning, after consultation with his legal representative, Mr McCullough has given us a written statement essentially and in that has given us a written statement essentially, and in that written statement he has acceded that the live stream was not live and was in fact recorded by him on the 13th into the 14th of December and that he had streamed it on the night of Sunday the 18th, he told the court. The court was told that McCullough, who works in digital media and is employed part-time as an assistant audience editor for the Belfast Telegraph, uh, journal, <laughs> I would suppose we should have suspected that, was initially arrested in the wake of the murder but then ruled out as a suspect on a basis of the alleged live stream alibi. Uh, he said McCullough then went on to interact with the McNally family in the weeks that followed. So he's sitting talking and chatting away to the family of the woman he killed. And I bet he thought he was so clever sitting there. If there was a camera there, he would look into it and smirk. <laughs> I'm quite the, quite the Patrick Bateman, aren't I, lads? Uh, he claimed uh, the accused uh, left... Oh, yeah. This is another messed up thing. Uh, he claimed that the accused left his phone in the home of Miss McNally's parents and recorded 40 minutes of audio. Mr. McGuinness said that he believed that this was McCullough attempting to determine if the family suspected him of involvement in the murder. It's particularly hurtful to the McNally family, who, as everyone in Northern Ireland is aware, have exercised enormous forbearance and welcomed this man into their home, he said. Uh, I feel that uh, that is an attempt to inquire into the progress of the police investigation and to see whether there is any suspicions around him. And I believe that is a heinous way of interfering with grieving parents. Judge Waters described the alleged recording as a gross invasion of the McNally family's privacy. Miss McNally's parents, no uh, Noel and Bernie, and brothers Declan, Niall and Brendan, were in court accompanied by several supporters as this evidence was outlined. Bearded McCullough, who was wearing a grey tracks, uh, watched proceedings via a video link from the police custody suite. He did not speak at any stage in the proceedings. Oh yeah, he's murdering a pregnant woman and going to an Irish jail. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck, son. <laughs> no, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You'll be great, man. Just say uh, the best thing, walk out into the main hall and introduce yourself. Uh, what to do is, uh, in order to keep yourself safe, you can't trust those pesky guards. Make sure to hang around in dark corners where there's no cameras. Those are, those, those are the, they're the safest places for you to hang out. 
He was remanded in custody to appear before uh, Craighaven Magistrates Court on February the 24th via video link after his bail application was rejected by the judge. A public prosecution service lawyer had urged the judge to refuse bail, insisting there were no conditions that would alleviate concerns about releasing the murder accused. The defendant has, in this case, hatched a sophisticated, calculating and cool-headed plot to kill Miss McNally, she said. Every detail had been carefully thought through and it's only due to painstaking... I don't think it's carefully thought through, I think the guy's an idiot. Uh, it's only due to painstaking police work and sophisticated cyber evidence that he hasn't gotten away with it and the plan is cracked. He will be desperate at this point. Over the last six weeks, he has behaved in such a way that he displayed a confidence that he had got away with this. He was liaising with the family. He was at their home. He will be absolutely desperate now. He has shown he is capable of deception beyond imagination. Excuse me. There are absolutely no bail conditions that could alleviate the risks posed here. The PPS lawyer said McCullough could potentially interfere with witnesses if bailed. Just last week, the defendant attended the McNally home and left his mobile phone there and came back later to collect it because he said he forgot it, she said. Look at him. What a gimp. Look at possession to do that, man. Uh, that phone was recording what was happening in the home, and the theory is that he wanted to see if there was any suspicion about him. Your worship, this is chilling. Had there been any suspicions uh, voiced by the family and any expression of an intention to talk to the police, we just don't know what would have happened. Ah, uh, yeah, good point. He's a dangerous person, your worship. I would ask that you refuse bail. McCullough was the person who claimed to have discovered Miss McNally's body in her home the day after the murder. Mr McGuinness said after McCullough was initially ruled out as a suspect, he refused to cooperate with detectives to give them details on how the murder scene looked when he arrived and before paramedics attended. Stephen McCullough did not have a long-standing relationship with the McNally family prior to Natalie's death, he said. They had only been introduced to him on two occasions. However, since they... Did she reject his advances? Or something, I don't know. I'm trying, I, I want to know the motive, I kind of want to know why the guy did it. However, since the investigation has begun, whilst in parallel with refusing to assist the investigation, knowing that he was a very significant witness to the crime scene, he has been in constant contact with the McNally family and inquiring into the progress of the police investigation. Defence barrister Craig Patton questioned the, the questioned, blah, questioned the evidence against his client as he challenged the basis upon which the police connected him to the charge. Making a bail application, Mr Patton added, essentially what the evidence seemed to all hang on is that this man did not live stream when he said he live streamed. <coughs> Excuse me. The court heard that police also believe they can trace McCullough from the murder scene back to his home in Lisburn through a combination of CCTV evidence, including on board a bus to Lurgan, and from the account of a taxi driver who police believe drove him on the final part of his journey, journey home after committing the murder. Yeah, he's fucked, he's an idiot. Uh, Mr McGuinness said, well fortunately he's an idiot, uh, Mr McGuinness said a man, man police believe is McCullough is shown revealing a yellow glove underneath a black glove while giving change to the bus driver. He said that the yellow glove would be consistent with a trace of marigold cleaning glove on a stain of Miss McNally's blood at the crime scene. The court heard that there was no activity on the accused's phone on the night of the murder from 6pm to 11.16pm three minutes after the taxi allegedly dropped him off at his home. Mr McGuinness said in the statement in which Mr McCullough acknowledged he was not live streaming on the night of the murder, he claimed he was instead drinking in his own house and had fell asleep. The senior detective said that McCullough claims he woke up at some point and swiped his mobile phone. I believe that reference is to swiping open at 11.16, said the officer. He did further say that he denied involvement in Natalie's murder. Mr McGuinness said McCullough acknowledged that the assailant had taken a taxi to his home and come in. Oh, the story just keeps changing, doesn't it? Uh, he added he didn't know who that was. He then posits some suggestions who that may have been, not by name, and said that he had no further information about who that would have been. Oh, a guy came up to my house and came inside. Oh, damn, I don't know. I was just in here. In my house. Didn't notice a guy come in, though. How strange, officer. <laughs> this guy is so stupid. 
Declining bail, yeah. <laughs> District Judge Waters said, I don't know that I've ever, co ever come across a case that is so complex. Mr. McCullough is said to have discovered her body at her home the morning after her death. He was remanded in custody to appear before Craigavon Magistrates Court on February 24th via video link. In a statement issued through the PSNI on Thursday afternoon, the McNally family said, over the past six weeks, we have opened our home and our hearts to the media, politicians, church leaders, campaign groups and the wider public. We did so in, the, in our determined quest for justice for our Natalie and baby Dean. Ah, oh, shit, the baby had a name. Uh, we, also, we have also used our platform to call for an immediate end to violence against women and girls. I mean, you would think it would be against violence just in general. You know, none of it's nice. Uh, we cannot thank all of you, you know, They've lost someone, I'll let them have it. Uh, we cannot thank you all enough for your steadfast support that has carried us through. We welcome the latest development in the case. Information remains key and we continue to call for any and all information to be brought forward to the PSNI or Crime Stoppers. We would now request some privacy to allow us to grieve privately as a family. <laughs> Did you just ask journalists for that? Yeah, they won't care. They'll be kicking your door down all the way through the trial. Uh I think this is just all the yeah. This is just all comments on all the nice stuff. Uh, basically, that people were you know the nice comments that people were saying about it. Uh, detectives investigating Miss McNally's murder carried out hundreds of house-to-house -house inquiries and seized more than four thousand hours of CCTV footage. A PSNI spokesperson said that all charges will be reviewed by the Public Prosecution Service as is normal procedure. Natalie's mother Bernie previously told Sky News of her heartbreak at her daughter's murder just days before Christmas. All her pay all her presents we had for her all wrapped up. They're all upstairs, and you look at them; it's heartbreaking. This was an innocent girl and her baby's life, and I have to thank God, in her last few minutes, was she pleading for her life, was she pleading for her baby's life. He was remanded in custody until his next court appearance in court at Craigavon Magistrates Court on February the 24th. Uh, but anyway, like I, like I said, like I said, you know, McCullough, oh, pal, you don't want to trust the guards or anything like that, so like, like I said, just, just hang around in like the dark places with no cameras. Trust me, Trust me, you know, this is, this is good advice. 